Picture a world where your Bluetooth speakers vanish, where fitness trackers and smart cameras all fail. Picture a world where your phone can't do half the things you've come to rely on daily. Now this faraway land you're picturing isn't a world without transistors or the internet. This was reality about 20 years ago without the magical efficiency and convenience of the internet of things. But what is this technology? How does it work? And how did it revolutionize our world in a matter of just two decades? Let's get right into it. Welcome to Engineering Insiders. Now, IoT isn't just some fancy buzzword. It describes devices with sensors, processing ability, and software that connect and exchange data with devices and systems over the internet and other communication networks. For example, do you know how sound detectors work? They have this amazing ability to sense the audible vibrations in our environment that we hear as sound. Similarly, thermometers use electrical components known as thermistors to detect the heat energy around them, measuring the temperature. Now you might not know it, but by understanding just this, you actually already know the things part of the internet of things. You see, these are basically all the physical devices that you have in your control. But what about the internet side? What magic lies behind the curtain? Great question. It's basically a cocktail of four ingredients, each of which have their own specific role. They are sensors, medium of exchange, data processing, and the user interface. Pretty simple, right? It's these four things that help us with our everyday tasks like turning on the lights, increasing the temperature of our room, setting up the timer for the coffee machine, and much more. But what exactly are these seemingly magical technologies that have exploded into a $320 billion industry? Well, we'll tell you. First, the IoT process always starts with a sensor. Fingerprint sensors, face sensors, voice sensors, our environment is swarmed by countless sensors in our everyday lives. As their name implies, a sensor's primary responsibility is to sense. But how can a machine sense its surroundings like you or I could? Well, sensors are programmed to constantly search for certain triggers in their surroundings. These triggers can be certain gases for a smoke detector, air vibrations for a sound detector, changes in the subject's position for a motion detector, and more. Once this physical trigger action is performed near a sensor, it converts its sense data into electrical signals that a computer can understand and process. But here's the interesting part. These sensors are engineered in a way such that they consume the minimum amount of power possible to get them to work. This is because inefficient power management means that you would constantly be checking your sensors to replace their batteries, costing you, the end consumer, time, money, and convenience. Nobody wants a surprise fire in their home just because their fire detector's batteries died, right? But once this electrical signal is efficiently sensed, where does it go? How is it processed? This is where the medium of exchange comes into play. The medium of data exchange is effectively a channel for the data packets to move from one component or device to another. The most common medium in these networks is the cloud. In case you don't know, cloud computing offers access to a remote database through the internet. In simple terms, all the devices in IoT use the internet to store and process data on a remote server somewhere. Think about how your Alexa can turn on music throughout your home despite not being physically connected to the speakers. This is all thanks to your home internet offering itself as the medium of exchange. And now that the data has been generated from the sensor and sent through our medium, it's time to figure out what the data actually represents. In other words, it's time for data processing. Basically, once the data is fed into our system through the medium of exchange, it is classified into one or more data types based on its nature like images, texts, or sound. This arranged and sorted data is now ready for processing. The signal processing uses various mathematical and logical calculations that turn the sense data, which is like an array of digital values, into something like a video that can be displayed on your phone. Or it uses the data to make a decision, like to stream the song you queued on your phone to your house speakers. And finally, when all the calculations and logic is completed, it's time to release the output to the users or forward it to the next device down the line for further processing. All these steps are carried out multiple times during the entire data processing life cycle to transform raw data into meaningful outputs necessary for the IoT network. 
which now leads us to debatably the most important component of the IoT network, the user interface. It is imperative that the users know the current status of their IoT devices so they can monitor what's going on. While obviously one cannot watch the data packets being exchanged and processed in real time, a special type of application is designed that updates the users about the current status of their data and IoT components so that they don't miss out on crucial information. For example, imagine a fire breaks out in a mall. If the fire alarm does not inform the concerned authorities, how useful is it? The answer is not very. More applicable to the average person, we don't only want to know what temperature we set our house to, we also want to know the current temperature. And we don't want to just be able to open or close our garage, we want the peace of mind from seeing your garage's status on your phone. Further, if our device is competing with hundreds of others on the market, we want to do everything we can to ensure our device is better, including having the cleanest user interface possible. Now hopefully you know the basics of how your devices work within the IoT network. If you learned something, consider liking and subscribing. It's free and really helps us make more engineering content just like this. Let us know in the comments if you want to learn about becoming an IoT engineer, and watch this video to learn about the field in which you can design any IoT device yourself. Happy engineering, everybody!